Hi everyone, I'm Devonchi Talker. I'm a Partner Solutions Architect here on our GPS team. And today we're gonna to be talking about Azure AI content safety. But before I dive into the details, I wanna set the scene with a simple scenario. So here's Alexandra. She's a new gamer who's elated to be getting into the gaming world. Her avatar is excited to enter the world of Galactic Quest. She grips the game controller and views the mission objectives and star maps. She joins the Starfire Squadron, a tight-knit group of players, and navigates through the chat channel, eager to connect with her new comrades. Within minutes, Alexandra encounters a barrage of messages. Some are friendly greetings, while others are cryptic messages from players she does not recognize. Amidst the camaraderie, there is a darker undercurrent, a toxic mix of hate speech, threats, and personal attacks. Alexandra's heart sinks. She'd heard about online toxicity, but experiencing it firsthand was jarring. She reports to the player, hoping the game's moderators will take action. What Alexandra didn't know was that the game developers had integrated the Azure Content Safety API. So as she continues the quest, every chat message is scanned, analyzing tone, context, and intent. When it detects harmful language, it flags the offending players. The next day, Alexandra receives a notification. Player Void Hunter has been temporarily muted due to inappropriate behavior. The relief is immense. Alexandra can now focus on her mission without fear of abuse. As weeks pass, Alexandra bonds with her squadron. They strategize, laugh, and celebrate victories. AI content safety is doing its job by flagging comments and the game helps by escalating severe cases to the game's administrators. Alexandra reflects on her journey. The, the Azure Content Safety API has transformed her gaming experience. It isn't just about winning battles. It's about fostering a community where players can thrive without fear. So there's a lot of content out there today, specifically problematic content. And we can see how content safety can be useful in so many scenarios across in industries. Like the gaming industry that we just saw, you can detect harmful language or behavior among players. Or in e-commerce, you can moderate product listings, reviews, and user-generated content. So you can identify fraudulent reviews, for example. In educational content, you can filter out content that's inappropriate for students or educators. Finally, for crisis response, content safety can help filter and prioritize information, allowing emergency responders to focus on critical tasks. All of the content out there today contains language that's very nuanced. So traditionally, we would just use certain bad words to determine harm. Well, now we can use Azure AI Content Safety to really understand the nuanced language that's out there and incorporate multimodal content as well to respond in a more intelligent way. So what is Azure AI Content Safety and how does it work? Well, it's a content moderation platform that uses AI to detect content that is safe. It has classifiers that include sexual, violent, hate, and self-harm content with high levels of granularity. The output is various severity scores that rate the content risk on a scale of low to high. Today, it can monitor text and image content for safety. The language models can analyze multilingual text as well with an understanding of context and semantics. There's four APIs available today, and we will see these in action in the next few minutes. You can also create your own block lists to enhance the coverage of harmful content specific to your use case. 
We also see jailbreak attacks becoming very common. So there are user prompts designed to provoke the generative AI model into exhibiting behaviors it was trained to avoid or to break the rules set in the system message. So you can use this API to detect the risk of jailbreak attacks in your text content. Today, it recognizes four different classes of jailbreak attacks, which we can see right here, changing system rules, embedding a conversation mockup in user query, role play, or encoding attacks. And we also have a detect protect material feature where you can identify or block known context from being displayed in the language model output. The known text content includes song lyrics, articles, recipes, or selected web content. And today this is for English only. All right, so now it is time to jump into our demo. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is create a content safety resource within your Azure portal. I've actually already done that. So if I scroll down, I should see the link to go to the Content Safety Studio, which is where we're gonna be doing most of the demo. Now I wanna pause here and just say that the Content Safety is actually a standalone API as well. So you can really bring it where you need, need it to be if you're using open source large language models or if you're building your own large language model, you can always bring in the features of content safety. So you can use it through the SDK, the REST API, and also within the Azure AI Studio in prompt flow. Today though, we're gonna focus our attention within the studio. So this is what it looks like. And it's a really nice UI for you to test out a lot of the APIs that I talked about. So the text, the image, jailbreak, and protected material detection. We'll go through all four today. Starting with the text content. So when I come in here, I can actually do a couple of things. I can select a sample or type in my own text input. And so if I put in something like this, and run test, let's talk through what it's doing. So the text API will scan the text that I put in for these categories, violence, self-harm, sexual, and hate. And it'll give me back a severity score based on the thresholds that I'm setting over here. So for this text prompt, let's say I wanna allow low violence, but block any medium or high content. Well, in the results over here, we can see the severity scores that I got. So hate was low, violence was medium, and sexual self-harm were both rated as safe. Now, the judgment is something it'll also output. It'll say either allow or blocked, a binary value. And so we can see that it was blocked for violent content. Now you can toggle these, which is really nice uh, to see what you want to allow and what you don't want to allow. Now, another interesting feature is using block lists. So what this does is it blocks certain words, maybe based on your use case. So here I'm just going to add one. Uh, I've created a block list titled actions, and I can add any terms here. So let's add hate, and I can add So now when we run that test, we do get that same result, but this time we're able to see the block list detection in action. So we see that it gave back hate and kill as the words that were detected. So that's how the text API works. You can also run a bulk test. So you can see here that the sample has a bunch of records that include content from different risk categories. And if I run this, you can see over here on the bottom that it allowed 70% of this list, but blocked 30%. And it's telling me which ones row by row that it blocked. Um, and it gives me a couple of different metrics as well. So within the SDK, it actually supports the full zero to seven severity scale instead of the trimmed version that we saw in the UI. All you have to do is specify 
eight severity skit levels instead of four. Um, and if I run this request and I scroll down, now I should see that my scores reflect that full zero to seven scale. All right, so for image content, you can do the same thing. You can either use one of the samples or upload your test here. So I'd highly encourage you all to test that out. Um, you can even run a bulk test. Now, multimodal content is in preview today. So if you wanted to use that, there is a form that you have to sign up with. And then finally, there's the jailbreak risk detection and protected material detection. Both of these are new. So if I hit this, then this actually helps you identify potential risks of misuse by malicious actors. So there is a sample right here that I wanna run. If I run this, let's run the safe one first. If I run this, it'll tell me no jailbreak attack was detected. But again, if I try to add this prompt, which has a jailbreak attempt, then it'll tell me that a jailbreak attack is detected. So it's a binary value. All right, finally, there is the protected material detection. And so think of protected material as language that matches known text, which includes song lyrics, articles, recipes, or selected web content. So this can help you detect if it was there or not. So what I'm gonna do actually is I'm gonna put in a couple of lyrics from one of my favorite songs by Bastille. So I'll go ahead and copy those and input them into here. I'm going to go ahead and run this text. And clearly, the protected material has been detected. I'm actually able to see the harm categories and detailed descriptions of each of them, along with examples. So I'd highly encourage looking at this. Finally, you can find a lot of examples within our GitHub repo of how to work with images and text and block lists as well. So feel free to check those out. Thanks, everyone.